Hey guys, what's up? All right, all right, all right. It's Double Deuce back with the other video I promised everybody with uh, the second engine. Um, I'm not going to do a build video on it today, um, but I did want to kind of go over everything. Um, some of the stuff you might need, so you know what I mean. So, um, and some of the stuff that I use. So, like I say, we'll go over, you know, how it's packaged and everything, which is really, really nice. I mean, it's, uh, you know, everything's set in foam and it's like all organized, very organized. It goes through, you know, your parts and pieces, and you'll see there's stuff that I bought. You know for the build so some of the things you may not want to buy it depends on what your build's going to be now one thing i've always kind of wondered about um you know when you're building something new that you don't know about and for instance my skyline there it's so heavy you, know, you don't know if uh the little clutches are going to hold up to it and i've had a lot of uh comments of people that want to use the baja 5 clutch they do make an adjustable clutch um, for it. And um, there's another guy online, I can't remember his name right now, but he's he built like, he built like an old Willys and all that. Well, he's he's got a video up now of one of these and you'll see it modified. He's got um, he's got headers he made for it. And he's building a sprint car. And uh, so you know, he's going to try to set up um, like a you know, a a fifth scale, you know, big weed whacker engine clutch on it. I don't know, um, to be honest with you, if it'll work because um, these engines are small, you know what I mean? They do produce a lot of power and a lot of torque, but um, it might help with, uh, you know, the inertia of the weight of it to keep it idling properly, but it's got to be a super lightweight spring clutch on it to take off and and sometimes if you get something too big like that um you know it could it could stall the engine you know what i'm saying where these little ones like this as you can see here i'm experimenting with an adjustable clutch it's um you know they make one that you can adjust with uh you know like a set screw but this is this has three different spots in it to adjust the you know whether you want it to launch early kind of mid-range or late you know and uh so i figured what i would do is i would start in the middle you know the problem with this is you have to remove it move the engine or gearbox to change the position of this um the other one that they make out there is it's like you know this is like 30 bucks but the other one's like a hundred and it's got a set screw and you and it moves this plate um with a set screw and uh which is pretty cool you know so but i did see um toy and engine has a conversion kit for the um like the tamaya semi and they have a bigger clutch on there it's it's you know i do have a clutch off my sen gste colossus 7.7 .7, and it's a lot bigger than this and it's a four shoe and uh but the problem is the clutch bell on it uh the gears are kind of reversed they got the small gear on the inside and the big gear on the outside and that would be okay if i was going to use a a, a sen you know gste three speed with the reverse in one of my builds i could try that so i bought this like i say i'm trying to keep everything affordable for us right now in that i do have the the clutch from sterling kit and i do have the um um, the uh, the clutch bell from Sterling kit in there also. So I think it's, I can't remember how many teeth it is. It's a single clutch. They only have a couple. They have a single and a dual gear clutch. And uh, and kind of a new thing that I've noticed too, um, they do have bell drives. They do have a belt clutch and they do have different size pulleys. Um, but I don't know, quite know what the shafts are. So you, you don't really know. I wish they would put um, like a little schematic on their page. That would be nice. I'm going to suggest that to uh, um, one of them when I email them next because I'm, I'm waiting for a starter motor for this because this one is crapped out on me. I don't know why it's, it's like locked up. You know, it doesn't, uh, it's just, it doesn't work very well. So I can't figure it out. 
I don't think it I think it's just a faulty motor um, <clears throat> but if they had a schematic on like you know like sizes you know in millimeters and all that like because when I bought I bought two of these because I thought that they would be smaller you know they come as a kit you put them all together you know and uh, so you got to this is what you find out when you're building something that you know sometimes the things are you know this here would be, it'd be nice for a huge build but not for something smaller so if I wanted to put the uh, the L400 in like an eight scale vehicle there's no way I mean I could use something like this you know it's a beautiful work of art if they made that like like thinner and smaller like you know like half and even to there or it's just like a you know maybe a inch and a half tall by an inch wide it's still going to do the same purpose and you still put the lid in now, i thought about cutting this down but they have they have it all like bonded together and you know so it's kind of it's hit or miss now then i bought the radiator with the brackets now i strongly suggest you buy the ones with the brackets they're a couple of bucks more um but the brackets they bolt right to the radiator and they come they come with all the hardware and everything you need and and you know you can alter this if you need to for your build now on mine i custom made these brackets and I, they look like a simple bracket but i tell you what they're not you know because you're you got to make them both even you got to get the holes exactly right when you're drilling them and so i blew it maybe an hour on making two brackets you know and uh but i wanted my radiator sideways and i wanted it closer to the fan as i could get it to pull the air through and um which works good you know so but now you can see the size of the radiator um so and i did buy the two uh two mufflers i suggest if you're going to build something you can't you can't build a muffler i've tried you know they're they take you hours to do and they get all you know a lot of them hold a lot of back pressure this is the straight through it's got padding in it and everything and uh this actually came with this in one end, this tube in one end. And so you could hook it to, you know, I think this is for the uh, the L200 or the uh, L100 uh, build, you know. So, but it works good for the tuner car I'm building because it's exactly the size I need. It comes with a clamp and that's cool. So one thing I wanted to stress was when you get an engine to put it together, go online and follow their directions from Toyin. One thing um, that's really important here, there's a lot of little things they don't show you in the schematic, okay? For instance, one thing that nobody has pointed out yet on the on their um, on their build. Now we all know that the the rings are not on the pistons, okay? They're in the block itself. Now one thing that's different on this one, now you have to keep the rings in that cylinder, okay? I don't think it matters which piston you put on it, but one thing that they didn't really say in the directions, what I couldn't figure out, was you'll see there's a little tiny spot there on that rod, okay? When this separates, now that, watch you don't lose the other half of the bearing in there because that, that comes out with it, you see? And uh, those two things must mate back up when you put it together. Okay, now I put all mine facing forward and uh, when I put it together. And use some lube and all that. And like I say, the ring, be careful when you put the ring on. You got to just kind of, you know, put a little grease on there and just slide around so it snaps in. Now, what I did was when I, uh, there's a ring gap, okay, where the ring is, is gapped, okay, and if you look in the cylinder block there, you'll see the rings in there, okay? But you can't see the gap because it's almost closed. So each and every ring is machined for each and every cylinder. So if you took this one out and put it in there, it might be a big gap in there. You don't know, you know? Or it might be too tight and it might lock it up. So put them in each hole when you take it out. So do one at a time. Um, and that you know stuff is really important stuff because of the longevity of the engine and um if you get on toyinengine.com i believe it is and go through their faqs 
they will tell you the maintenance schedules, the how how many hours you can run this before you have to regrease it. Um, it, it it's just a it's a wealth full of knowledge that I didn't know. I kind of had to learn that with the seat of my pants, and because um, you know when you're you know how how many do you grease this every time you run it or no? Because they say you can grease it every so many hours of running time, you know. And so they have put these through some research and development and ran these things and ran them and ran them so they know um, what's best for them. And uh, when you, you know, don't be afraid of using the grease. Um, here's the deal. You get a little bit of grease with it, you know, that's, that's almost enough to, like, put everything together lightly. Uh, but you're, you're probably, I use most of this in my other one, and I do have a couple of them that I bought, but... Um, and this here is Loctite, okay? But if you can see, there's hardly any in there. It's just like an empty cylinder. There's a little bit in the corner over there. And when I put my rods together, I like to use, you know, anything downstairs and uh, that's going to be beaten around. Um, I use the blue Loctite so you can remove it. Um, but like all the rod bolts or screws, Loctite them. Um, for the top of the uh, cylinder head, your rocker arm brackets, lock tight them because they do back off. And another important thing, you can't put your camshaft in until the cylinder head is totally on there. Because underneath the camshaft, in that corner back there, there's one there and there's one there in the corner. Okay, you cannot tighten them up when you have the camshaft in. You have to pull that all back out. So don't build the head until the cylinder head is bolted to the top of your engine block. Okay? So it would go like that. So when it's bolted down, okay, now you can put your camshaft in. You can put your rockers on. Plus, it has a nice, you know, it's getting it up in the air where you can work on it, you know? And uh, the crankshaft itself, it already has the seals on it. In the back or the front I'm sorry okay and make sure you put some grease on this before you slide it in okay and put a little grease inside the boss of the block to help it go in so it doesn't tear the seal okay uh, the water pump I found out they give you two gaskets two big round gaskets for the water pump you have to use both of them because if not that's why my on uh, my test start of this it leaked because I didn't have the two gaskets in there and the gaskets have to fill that little recession in there. And that way it keeps the antifreeze or fluid from coming out on you. And uh, so, and you're going to want to put a little bit of grease in here and put that um, belt tensioner in there back and forth a little bit and kind of make sure it fits nice. Because after I got mine together, it was, it was jammed in there and I couldn't move it and I had to take it all back apart again. So you want to avoid taking stuff back apart after you got it all together because one it takes longer for your build and uh you know two <laughs> it's you know now you're you're if you got loctite in now you know how much loctite can you put in a screw hole before you screw it up you know usually once you put these together once you don't want to have to go tearing them down again you know unless it's to rebuild it or something like that um another important thing is on the camshaft or pulleys you're gonna find one now this has already been put together for you okay and um, it's already got the bearings in it and everything else um, put some oil in that bearing okay and turn it because mine was squealing like crazy after I got it on there and you know now it was already in the car and you know it was it was driving me bananas, so I couldn't figure out where the squealing was coming from, and what it was, it was that it was that bearing was whatever grease or whatever was in it was not enough. So I had dripped a little bit of uh, I use um, HHS 2000 from Worth. Um, that's a nice. Um, it's a sprayable. It goes on super thin. Um, it's kind of a clear yellow clear color and then it turns to like a grease and it's good for um like when you know what they made it for was for like uh door checks when you open your door up 
anything with a lot of pressure on it, it, it stays there. It's like honey. It doesn't go nowhere. And so when I had assembled mine, I had shot a little bit on the crankshaft um, and all that. But if you don't have it, use some grease, okay? And another thing, too, when you put your, your cam tappets on, okay, make sure you just take a Q-tip and just run a little grease in there. Um, because these are directly running on top of these, so the odds of anything getting up underneath there from blow-by is going to take a while. So it's going to it's going to stop a lot of premature wear, and uh, so that's pretty much it on that. So um, oh, and another thing is to follow the directions. I think they say the brown side goes out on your starter because this is a one-way bearing. Okay. And when you turn it, when now the motor's turning, these turn, if you look at the back of the engine block, like so, these turn counterclockwise when it runs, okay? So the starter motor is going to turn this counterclockwise when, um, to start it. Right? If you got this in backwards, it's just going to run freely. It ain't going to, you know, it ain't going to do nothing. And be sure there's a couple of little washers and stuff you have to add with these. Make sure you put them in there so that it doesn't, so this will turn freely without rubbing against the back of, say, your um, your flywheel. Because if you can see, these these fit flush, you know, they're butt together. But if you have something, a little bit of space in there to keep it away from the block and that, just be, make sure you follow the directions. And it doesn't hurt to check this stuff when you put it together. Put it together, check it. Make sure everything's free and loose. That way, when you're all done and it won't start, you, you'll know why. You know, you, you you can you can save yourself a lot of problems. So, but, anywho, I didn't want to take this crazy long video of this thing because I already did a video. And, I mean, I was going to do an assembly video of this thing. Um, I'll take a vote on it if, if uh, I get enough votes out there, you know. Just leave a message in the comments if you want to, to see me build this thing. It's going to be a long video, and I don't want to bore everybody. And, uh, if you know, it's I could put it together in about four hours, but if you videotape it and all that, I'm going to have to make it in segments, you know, because nobody going to sit down and watch a four-hour uh, YouTube video on, you know, how to properly build your, your engine. But... Uh, but like I say, any questions or things like that you got, you can feel free to hit me up. And if not, go to the toyandengine.com. Look up their um, their FAQs on on the engine. And if you download the instructions, I do see my other one didn't have um, English, but this one does now. So you know, operating, and you can actually go to follow the WeChat account, and you know. And the toyandengine.com and this right here is toyandengine.com so I've never used one of these on my phone I just go to the site on my computer and I download it and I keep it in my favorites that way if I ever need something I can go back um, I have over the years put literally hundreds and hundreds or maybe thousands and thousands of cars back together in my profession so I can look at a photo and figure it out you know but it does, it does help to like you know, to know it all. You know what I mean. So you can read through things and all that. But um, especially when it comes to building an engine, you know, uh, putting a fender on or a bracket or you know assembling a headlight or tail light in a car or welding a frame rail, you can go by a schematic and they give you the measurements and yada yada and you know you just mix it up. But when you're putting an engine together, this is a very fine. Um, piece of machinery and everything is made to work within its own tolerances so um you know they have they have done a phenomenal job at building this engine i'll put it that way um i did hear one um drawback of the engine i did hear um one of the subscribers hit me and the, he said the crankshaft broke so that's a pretty stout crankshaft so i don't know if there was something faulty in the the metal of the crankshaft because he says his broke between the second and third journal or in half or somewhere but uh he said he was on his sixth tank of fuel when it happened so another important thing is when you fire these up 
all these, the, I know they're shiny and all that, but all these surfaces have to break themselves in with every other surface. Um, so your rings, your, um, you know, your, your rod bearings, all this stuff has to set in, okay? And um, if you want to be safe, um, one thing you could do, um, you could go to like Summit Racing and you could buy some of their break-in oil, okay? Um, you got to buy it by the pint or the quart. It's, it's got a lot of um, zinc in it. And zinc helps things wear in, um, I guess, what are you going to say, slowly. And it keeps it well lubricated so everything doesn't, like, burn itself in right away. Because um, if you put this engine together dry, I guarantee it ain't going to last long at all when, when you start it up. You have to, like, when you get it all together before you put your oil pan on, maybe run some oil all over everything even down in the cylinder walls like you know make sure they set it upside down run a little oil down in there whether you brush it in with a q-tip or whatever try not to get the little hairs all over the place um but if you use a break-in oil just a light coat of it on everything it'll work fine um like i say i use the worth hhs 2000 um and it um you know it helps it get over that wear-in period because these things, one thing you'll notice when you do run them, they get wicked hot when you first run these things. That's because of all the friction inside the engine and until it seats itself in. Then it runs cooler and cooler and cooler. That's why they say on a nitro engine to run it really rich. That way everything, it keeps the heat down because the more heat you got, the more swelling you got. And swelling's not good, um, you know, on a small engine like that because... You know, they have like millimeters or, you know, hundreds of thousands of millimeters of clearance in them. And when they swell up like that, it, you can do a lot of damage. So if you start it up, let it run for a minute, shut it down. And then start it again, let it run for a minute, set it down. You know what I mean? And longer and longer. So you do that for your first tank of fuel, run it to, you know, maybe a quarter of a tank of fuel. And just keep an eye on it. If you got a, you know, electronic thermometer or your hand and touch it. And if it's getting too hot shut it down you know because that one there i was really kind of concerned with the hood on this because i was going to open the hood up up here and uh to let air in because this thing got extremely hot and uh, that was with the cooling in it and everything but now that i've ran some tanks to it i've got about six tanks of fuel through this now and um you know try not to over rev it do that stuff i know everybody does it in the videos i did it myself you want to hear that thing rev you know um, let it kind of like work itself in and after that you can you know you'll, you'll probably be good and safe to rev it up you know so but that's my video for today um, like share subscribe if you want like I say um, you know hit hit a vote in the comments if you if you want to see me build this it's going to be a long video like I say but I will do it on video um, I'll try doing a, a no talk video I'll just put it together and I may mean, I throw some advice tips in there or whatever, but you know, it's up to you guys. So like, share, subscribe, like I say, um, you guys have a good, uh, rest of the weekend and I'll catch you later. Adios.